Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Celis Jackson. Monday, the 27th of December, 2021, is the Feast of St. John, Apostle and Evangelist, Christmas week. Laudate, our daily prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you have triumphed over the grave and you have won new life for us. Give me the eyes of faith to see you in your glory. Help me to draw near to you and to grow in the knowledge of your great love and power that sets us free to love and serve you now and forever in your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Magnificat, daily scripture, but first an overview. The apostle and evangelist John was a fisherman before he met Christ, identified in his gospel simply as the disciple whom Jesus loved. He was the only apostle who remained at the foot of the cross. To him Jesus entrusted his mother. With Peter, John was one of the first witnesses to the resurrection. John was honored as one of three pillars of the church. After the persecution of Herod Agrippa, in which his brother James was martyred, John traveled to Asia Minor, where he composed his gospel and epistles. The book of Revelations was written while John was in exile on the land of Patmos. John died in Ephesus around the year 100. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim now to you. A reading from the first letter of St. John, chapter 1, verse 1. Beloved, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked upon and touched with our hands concerns the word of life, for the life was made visible. We have seen it and testified to it, and proclaimed to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was made visible to us. What we have seen and heard we proclaim now to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, for our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing this so that our joy may be complete. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 97 Responsorial Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are around him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice and all people see his glory. Life dawns for the just and gladness for the upright of heart. Be glad in the Lord, you just, and give thanks to his holy name. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. The glorious company of apostles praise you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John chapter 20 verse 1. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. 
He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, the cloth that had covered his head, not with a burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magnificat Meditation of the Day is entitled Saint John, Beloved and Lover. Saint John the Apostle and Evangelist is chiefly the most familiarly known to us as the disciple whom Jesus loved. He was one of the three or four who always attended our blessed Lord and had the privilege of the most intimate conversation with him. He was his bosom friend as we commonly express ourselves. At the solemn supper before Christ suffered, he took his place next to him and leaned on his breast. Peter dared not ask Jesus a question himself, but bade John put it to him, who it was that should betray him. Thus, St. John was the private and intimate friend of Christ. Again, it was to St. John that our Lord committed his mother when he was dying on the cross. It was to St. John that he revealed in vision, after his departure, the fortunes of his church. We know he is celebrated for his declaration about Christian love. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. If we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. 1 John 4, 7 Now, did he begin with some vast effort at loving on a large scale? No, he had the unspeakable privilege of being the friend of Christ. Thus, he was taught to love others. First his affection was concentrated, then it was expanded. Next, he had the solemn and comfortable charge of tending to our Lord's Mother, the Blessed Virgin, after his departure. Do we not here discern the secret sources of his especial love of the brethren? Could he, who first was favored with his Savior's affection, then trusted with a son's office towards his mother, could he be other than a memorial and pattern, as far as man can be, of love deep, contemplative, fervent, unruffled, unbounded? This meditation is written by St. John Henry Newman, who died in 1890. A cardinal established the oratory in Birmingham, England, and was a preacher of great eloquence. Laudate, Reflections and Actionable Challenges from Our Scriptural Readings Introductory Prayer Lord, today I am reminded of the intensity of love that you stir in the hearts of your followers. I want to be your follower today. I believe that you love me. I believe that you have overcome sin and death. I believe that you walk with me. Amen. Our petition for the next three challenging opportunities helping advance God's kingdom on earth. Lord, give me the joy of discovering you as St. John discovered you. Our first opportunity. Eager. St. John had been enthused by Christ from the very beginning, early on. Christ had won his heart. In his Gospel, John would record many things about Christ in a very personal way, giving us special insights into Christ. Christ allowed him into his heart, and John's faith gave him reason 
to hope in the resurrection. That is why he runs with such eagerness to the tomb. He does not yet know that Christ is risen, but he wants to know. He wants to be where Christ is. Am I eager to be with Christ? This time of Christmas is a special time in which I can naturally feel attracted to Christ. Do I take advantage of this grace and try to converse more with Him? Our second opportunity, fast. No hesitation, get there as quickly as possible. John knows where he has to go. Nothing else is as important. He does not let anything get in the way. A saint lives his life quickly, even if his years are long. He lives it quickly because he lives each day, each moment, intensely for Christ and souls. He lives his prayer life intensely, in spite of the natural fatigue and the moments of dryness because he knows the time spent in prayer is the most important moment of the day. A saint lives his service to his family and to others with the intensity of love. Rather than tiring him, love brings him closer to God. Am I afraid to love and to live with intensity? Opportunity number three, believing. John was rewarded for his faith. His Lord is alive. No amount of cruelty and evil, not even death itself, can defeat his Lord. John teaches us to believe in Christ, to discover with joy the signs of his presence. Am I using this Christmas season to reaffirm my faith in Christ's presence in the world? Do I cultivate a supernatural outlook in the things I do, in the way I deal with those around me? Do I build up confidence in Christ's victory in souls and discover the signs of that victory? Our Conversation with Christ Lord, thank you for St. John's faith. He was close to your heart. Help me to place my heart in your heart. I want to run to you, Lord, throughout the ups and downs of my life, the good times and the bad. Today, I will stay close to you in my heart. Stay close to me also. Our Resolution I will pray the creed in front of a manger scene today and make a special effort to talk about God's providence in my conversations with others. Further reflection entitled The Christmas Spirit of Love Quote, Early in the morning on the first day of the week while it was still dark Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away, so she ran off to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. Unquote. John 20, 1. On this third day of Christmas, our true love, Jesus, gives us the opportunity to contemplate the life of St. John who is traditionally identified as the beloved disciple. In doing this, we will have fellowship with John and all the saints, 1 John 1, 3. In our communion with them, we abide in love and abide in God, 1 John 4, 16. Thus, on this third day of Christmas, our true love gives us love and the grace to love so deeply that we abide in love forever. We all desire to be loved and to love, yet at the same time we desire to be selfish and thereby to confine ourselves to a prison of pride. We need the Holy Spirit, the true Christmas Spirit, for His desires are against our selfish, carnal desires. Galatians 5.17 
As the Holy Spirit will lead us to live our baptisms to the full, He will convict us of our sinful capitulations to the demands of our selfishness. John 16, 8 Then He will use His wonderful gifts to produce in us the fruit of the Spirit, that is, love. Galatians 5.22 on this day of love, read and pray parts of John's Gospel, his three letters, and Revelation. Read, pray, and obey in the Spirit. Receive and give God's abiding love forever. Our Prayer Father, in this Christmas season, lead me into a new dimension of love. God's promise to us. This is what we proclaim to you, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked upon and our hands have touched. We speak of the word of life. This life became visible. We have seen and bear witness to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life that was present to the Father and became visible to us. 1 John 1, 1 Thomas A. Campus quote from The Imitation of Christ O oh my God, eternal love, my whole good and never-ending happiness, I desire to receive thee with the most vehement desire and most worthy reverence that any of the saints have ever had or could experience. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May His peace rest upon you as you go and announce the Gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.